The Mario movie has backwards long jumped into theaters and the reviews are mixed. Critics hate it, fans seem to love it, and people who know of Mario think it's pretty okay. I, myself, loved it, but I'm a pretty big Mario fan, so I of course had my fanboy viewing, where my friends and I wojacked and pointed at the screen whenever we saw a thing we knew! And then I went back a second time to try and put on my content creator goggles, only to realize they were 3D goggles, and so yeah, I saw it, I saw it a second time, but it was 3D, and that was pretty cool. I'm gonna get it into heavy spoilers. Luckily, this video got delayed because of life, so hopefully more people people saw the movie, but if you just want the TLDR, I think it's a great experience for Mario fans. A pretty lackluster movie, and the aesthetics are phenomenal. Please sub, etc, etc, Rhythm Heaven music. Let's go. I'll start off with the lackluster movie claim. I love the movie, I saw it twice, and I want to see it more. But it's just not a great film. See, the movie is kind of like a theme park ride. It's just designed to inflate the senses and make you happy. The story isn't anything new, the pacing is horrendous, and if you don't know Mario, you're gonna miss a majority of what the movie wants to show you. It is jam-packed with Easter eggs and references to other Nintendo titles or Mario's history. My favorite probably being that Mario and Luigi's family is voiced by members of the original Super Mario Bros. Super Show, with their... uncle? being voiced by the Super Show Luigi, and I'm sure if Captain Lou was alive today, he probably would have gotten to be the dad. The market of the film is obviously for children, but they crammed in so many references for those who grew up with Nintendo. A lot of the people in the theater I was in didn't seem to catch or care about most of the references that actually happened. I do also live in Michigan though, and people here really only care about sports and beer, so maybe it was different in LA or something. The whole thing did a good job of being what it was designed to be. It was a video game movie, a movie about video game characters doing video game things. Such a crazy concept that a film about existing media kind of like showcases and follows the rules that the media has already established. It just focused on characters you know and love. Sure, some news were introduced, like Mario and Luigi's family, but we didn't get a 30-minute sequence where their ma goes to the store and gets into crazy sitcom -y situations. I think it's kind of another reason why I love this movie so much. It was really refreshing to watch a film that wasn't non-stop quips. No character is really a smug, one-eyebrow, raised, suave hero. It's a him. Mario. That's it. There are some cliches like, oh, my life X has happened when I wanted Y, and stuff like that, but it isn't trying to be another Marvel movie or anything. Like, even the previews showed off the floating bricks bit, and take note of how he says it once, and the movie continues. It isn't, bricks float here? They float here! They float here. Ugh. As mentioned, the movie does have horrendous pacing. There is no time to establish much, and none of the characters really get fleshed out. You just kind of move from scene to scene, like a theme park ride. For instance, the one scene where Mario asks where Peach is from, she's just kind of like, I don't know, I showed up here. All right, let's go. Excuse me, I'd, I'd like to know more, please. But obviously that's just kind of sequel bait where they can introduce Rosalina and Peach can be like, I think she's my mom. But that's just a theory. I think the film easily could have used another 30 minutes because the characters do have really fun interactions and chemistry, but you don't get to see it enough. Mario and Toad interact in the beginning, he claims they're best friends, and then after that point, I can't remember if they exchange any other lines with one another. There are just a lot of moments where they talk about something and then forget it for the rest of the movie, like DK and Mario's daddy issues. But my biggest gripe hands down is Luigi. My boy, they screw him. He gets captured shortly after the movie starts, and then he's just gone until the end, basically. You don't get to see him really interact with anyone other than Mario. Granted, those scenes are so amazing. I love seeing the brothers be brothers. And I know cartoons love the whole haha Mario hate Loogie shtick, but they're always so sweet in the games. Even when I animate the two, I try and show some brotherly love alongside the bickering. I feel kind of silly, but I did kind of choke up when Mario saved Luigi and the two of them looked at each other like they were gonna happy cry after their hug. In my trailer salt, I went off on Chris Pratt and after seeing the film, I'll definitely own up that I was sorta wrong. He did a better job than I thought he would. The trailers did not do a good showcase, but I was kind of bothered that he like turns the accent on and off. Both the Mario accent and the Brooklyn accent, if you can call it that, he does a nice job in the beginning with the Mario voice and I kind of wish they just did that, but still, I didn't hate him. I am curious though, because the Mushroom Kingdom, here we come line isn't in the movie, so did like an intern just add a joke take he did to the trailer or something, and are they fired? Charlie as Luigi was great when we actually, you know, got to hear him, and Keegan Toad was okay. I didn't hate Seth DK either, but it's literally just Seth Rogen voice. I don't know why anyone expected different. I think he should be limited to one laugh per movie, though. It's it's getting obnoxious. 
Peach was good. She had a lot of fun lines. She isn't Peach from the games, though, and instead seems to be more akin to Peach from Super Mario Adventures. And that's pretty fun to see. Her and Mario had a lot of cute scenes. I like their sort of flirty nature, but they aren't afraid to challenge each other. It's nice that Peach kind of fulfills the mentor role and mostly just tries to build Mario and her friends up instead of taking shots at them and being smug. Minus the short comment, but that was mostly surprise, I feel. Absolutely love Jack Black as Bowser and Kevin Kamek. Their scenes were some of my favorites. Kamek might be my favorite character in the movie. He's just so wonderfully animated and seeing him get all excited about like Bowser being bad or playing along with his wedding proposals is just tops. Speaking of, I am glad they kind of like kept incel Bowser a secret. The trailers made him seem so scary and intimidating and honestly I did think that's what he was going to be like. So the audience could have a similar reaction to his wedding plans as his troops did. I really wanted to see more of those two and definitely would have preferred Luigi to either escape and roam the castle a little bit or just take longer to get captured. But to be fair, even without the training, as soon as Luigi fights, they beat the big bad. So he's clearly just too OP. They had to bench him because like, how else would you write that? Am I right? As mentioned, the aesthetics are amazing. Everything is so colorful and fun. The soundtrack is great, and there are so many little motifs thrown in from the games, stuff from Luigi's Mansion, Galaxy, even Origami King. They also use the game sound effects very frequently, and they don't seem out of place. I will say, though, they definitely made some odd choices with the licensed music. I don't think any of the songs fit particularly well, except for maybe Mr. Blue Sky at the end, because... I think it serves as a good bait to make it seem like they're still in Brooklyn. Outside of that, they all just feel very out of place. And the biggest offender obviously being Take On Me, which was clearly a last second addition, since they have a fully fit song in the soundtrack. It's called Driving Me Bananas, and it was clearly made for that specific scene. I'm guessing its execs are being like, we need a trendy pop song for the parents taking their kids, so... I don't know, I guess I'll take a lousy song choice over a wedding scene following non-game characters. All in all, I think the movie does exactly what it set out to do. Be a Mario movie. Super Mario is not a very complex or deep title, and so it doesn't need a complex or deep story for a film adaptation. Granted, if it was one of the Mario RPGs, then I'd make more of an argument here. I still don't recommend it to anyone who isn't a Mario fan, as a lot of the movie will be lost on you. Like the Sonic 2 movie, I could see non-Sonic fans maybe enjoying. Non-Mario fans, though, I think they'll just be confused and felt like they just went on like a super fast ride that they didn't want to. However, out of all the video game movies I've seen, this is probably my favorite. Sonic 2 is probably second, and I will never get over Monster Hunter movies saying so good instead of so tasty. It was one thing you could have done to show that you've actually played the games you've- One final complaint though. Why did you kill Toadsworth? It was the perfect time to bring him back, especially with Baby Peach. Then you have the gall to add insult to injury by giving all of the Council of Toads glasses and Toadsworth's exact outfit with a color swap? Just bring him back! I want to hear yabba blah 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 again!